In the previous lesson, we talked about CSS at a high level, and then we discussed the various CSS selectors at length. Now we're going to begin the process of examining the CSS properties that can be set focusing first on font and text related CSS properties and then moving on from there in subsequent lessons. Now for the next four videos I did a little experiment. Uh, you can use what I did or I would encourage you to spend a few days and take the approach that I took and do the exact same thing on your own. But I basically went through almost every single CSS property uh, and then I created a cheat sheet for it. And so I created a few web pages, one for each video in this case, uh, and that utilize the actual CSS properties and all possible settings so that I could ensure I knew what I was talking about for this video series. It was a great learning experience. I highly recommend you do the same. It is time consuming, but what you need to do is find a, a website, a book, something that references every single CSS property, and then begin just typing out like I did. Here, let me show you the source uh, to this. Uh, actually, It'll, this will be in its own folder by the time it gets to you. But you can see what I did here. Uh, very simple, just created um, a heading and then styled number of paragraphs in this case. I used inline styles. Again, I wouldn't recommend that you did the, do this in a real application, but in this case, I just wanted a quick down and dirty way of getting that style information into every paragraph without having to find a thousand styles in an external style sheet, okay? So I just use the inline style um, attribute. And so you can see here where I've set the font family to various fonts, the font sizes, font weights, and so on. And just went through and created this cheat sheet for myself. And now I feel prepared to have this conversation and then also it was a good refresher for some things that I'd already known. But what I want to do in the course of this video then is just review this this cheat sheet that I created for myself and uh, call your attention to several properties that might need a little elaboration. Uh, for example, we can start with the font family. Uh, the font's typeface is called the font family. In fact, you can stack them, although I didn't do that here in this. You many times will see them stacked like you see on the screen right here. Um, and the reason you stack them is to make uh, backups for selection so the browser if it doesn't have access for example to the Arial font it'll look for Helvetica if it doesn't have uh, access to the Helvetica font on the person's system or device then it will look for any sans serif font and so this is a means of just stacking up the fonts making sure that there are adequate substitutes in case somebody doesn't have a specific font on their system all right moving on uh, I think one of the most confusing things about working with cascading style sheets is how many different ways you can define sizes of things like fonts and text related uh, sizes as we'll see a little bit in a moment. There are basically four ways to define sizes. Uh, the first is a point and a point is traditionally used in print media. Uh, one point is exactly one seventy second of an inch. Uh, they are fixed in size, they cannot be scaled. The problem with the point is that it's really dependent on the resolution of the computer screen, not the actual size that's rendered on the monitor. In other words, I could be running at a small 13 inch screen at 1280 by 720 resolution, or a very large screen at 1280 by uh, 720, and uh, neither of these will be one, uh, one point won't be one seventy second of an actual inch. So points are generally considered a bad idea in web design, especially since they don't scale upward or downward to fit the given device that they're displayed on. Then there's pixels or PX like we've used uh, a couple times up to now. And pixels are another fixed size unit used for screen media. A pixel is supposed to be equal to one dot on the computer screen, a single pixel of the screen. However, here again, pixels don't take into consideration the screen resolution, so they're not really a reliable measure. Uh, furthermore, again, they're fixed so they don't scale upward or downward to fit the given device that they're displayed on. Then you have M's, EMS, or M. EM, a scalable unit that's used in web document media. An M is equal to the current font size set by the browser. So if the font size of the current web document is 12 points, then one EM is equal to 12 points. 
two EMs would be 24 points and so on. It kind of works like percentages. If you want a 20% larger uh, font than what the default document has defined as the normal font, then you would use 1.2 EM, all right? And then there's percentages, and this is a lot like EMs, except it's expressed in actual percentages, not decimals. So 100% is equal to 12 points, 200% is 24 points, and so on. Now there's a couple of great articles out on the internet. Let me copy one and put it uh, here. So I really enjoy this article. I think that uh, it does a really good job of explaining what I just said in a little more detail with some with some obvious uh, examples here and some good uh, upsides and downsides. As some people note in the comments, this article is a couple of years old now and and perhaps some of these things it was written in 2008. So some of these things may have changed as styles and browsers have been updated. So keep that in consideration, uh, but I haven't found a better source than this quite honestly. Um, and there are endless debates on the internet on which way is the best way and why. And I'm not sure what to tell you, quite honestly. As of now, the most popular way seems to be to define sizes in a relative manner using M's or percentages. But some people swear by pixels for fixed sizes because they don't want to relinquish uh, the size of the font to uh, the user and when they change the sizes in the browser, but the people are going to do that anyway, quite frankly. So to add to the confusion, there are relative name sizes and named weights and so on. So if you take a look here, uh, we have not only uh, the font size expressed in M's, percentages, and pixels, but also there's a number of name sizes like small or small, which look about the same on Internet Explorer, medium, large, larger, which look about the same, extra large, and XX large, okay? So again, another relative way of defining sizes. As I've recommended several times up to now, pick a style and stick with it, uh, unless you have a reason not to. Next up are font weights, and you can see that there are named weights as well as font weights from uh, 100 to 900, with 900 being the thickest. I think again, it depends on the font that's available to the computer, how it's able to render its thickness. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, as we kind of scroll down, font style is pretty obvious. Font variant, variant we've already used uh, the small caps variant. Uh, letter spacing and word spacing just expressed in M's, how each letter should be spaced or each word should be spaced uh, between uh, each word. Uh, line height, I've demonstrated two styles with a normal and with uh, I think a two EM where there's a bunch of space in between each line. Uh, text transform, uppercase, maybe that's one that I used in lesson three, I can't quite recall. Text alignment, uh, vertical line, and vertical line has to do with the text that it's butted up next to. So in this case, I have some very large text and then the text next to it will be aligned relative to its um, its uh, its neighbor. So in this case, vertical align top puts it at this top section of the serif font, whereas a, a super, you can see vertical align super puts it at the top line of the capital letter, not the lowercase, uh, um, I guess, imaginary line for the serifs. Again, the same would be true for subs and bottoms baselines and so on. So that's a good reference to see exactly uh, what, to, uh, what to expect whenever you're working with the vertical alignment. Text indent in terms of pixels, how much from the left hand side should be indented. Uh, white space, there are three settings, normal, pre, and no wrap. Pre will include any uh, empty spaces, white spaces uh, in the rendering of it and will not wrap to another line. No wrap ignores the white space and will not wrap to another line. Okay, so that's the difference between those two. And then finally, there's text decoration. We've already used underline, overline, and line through in the previous lesson just to demonstrate some selectors and to call out attention to some uh, of the selectors that we've created. All right, so, you know, it's as simple as that. Um, 
what remains in the rest of the series of videos is pretty much a similar format to what we've done here just a review of the types of properties that can be set and the properties that they can be set to calling your attention to ones that need a little more explanation so we'll pick it back up in the next lesson we'll see you there thank you Thank mm -hmm. you.